take up our subject matter and we're going to heaven. How y'all doing? Wonderful. Most of y'all look free. It's a good stuff. Um, how many of you were blessed by our teaching Sunday? Woo! Um, give me three courageous souls that would like to share what stood out to them about what we learned, what we taught on Sunday. And preferably, um, they should be sitting on the first row. So go ahead. All right, at the point where nobody moves, I'll just call you. Four, three, <laughs> two, all right. Aaron, come here. Yeah. Bravo. I have finish it all. Who else is here? <laughs> Sunday. Michael, were you here? You were? Jordan, come here. You were serving, so you should have some notes. I got a And who's going to be three? Uh -huh. I need a young lady. Glory be here. Is Glory even here? Were you here? Okay. All right. What stood out to you Sunday? Um, well, basically, we were talking about the um, book of Revelations and how it's basically not talking about the end of times and. Pretty much growing up in my old church, that's pretty much all they talked about, so that's what I thought it was about. So I researched it myself and I saw that it wasn't, so that just pretty much blew my mind. Awesome. One of the points from Sunday was that the book of Revelations is the book of the revelations of Jesus Christ. It is the revelations of Jesus Christ, not the revelations of the end of the world. That's major. That's major to understand because when a whole book is dedicated to revealing Jesus Christ, that we have redirected to be dedicated to something else. There is something to be known about that. Good job, thank you, sir. Jordan, what stood out Sunday? Um, what stood out to me the most was when you said that all we have to do basically is preach Jesus. Um, and that's what gives us access to um, the supernatural abilities, the powers and everything else like that. Absolutely, how many of you know Paul called Jesus his message? And if he was more than a man, he was also a message, then it gives us the full depth that we need to heal, save, deliver, confront, witness, all of that. And we saw that in demonstration, didn't we? We preached him and he did what he needed to do. So he is also a message. Great point. Thank you, sir. Glory, what'd you learn? Um, to actually go into Revelation and think of things for myself opposed to the end times, um, how would I articulate that? You grow up and you hear so much that we're living in the end times and you don't go and we don't study things for ourselves and you challenge me to go back and to begin to deconstruct the things that were deeply embedded that I wasn't even aware of was still there. And because of that, I have a deeper understanding that I'm able to better articulate who Jesus is and why this is not the time to be fearful, but actually confident in what God is doing. That bless me. Yes, 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 yes. How many of you have that same testimony where wherever you came from, they put such a, a, a horror-like emphasis on the book of Revelation that you avoided it all. Let's be honest. I know I did. I just didn't think it was. I'm like, we'll use this. We'll just start hailstorming outside. And we'll get to that. I'll live by every name from Genesis to Jude. Um, but it's so true. I, and, and, you know, if you look at the book of Revelation, you see Jesus Christ as a, as a lion. You see him as a voice out of the throne of God. You see him as one that's worthy to hold things up. I mean, you really do see... Uh, him as he is. I'm not telling you um, to go and, and, and lose your mind and just study that, but I'm telling you that it's not the revelations of the last days. It's the revelations of the Son of Man. Alright, the Lord has put a word in my mouth that is going to be the basis of our prayer meeting, even with all three of our, um, um, the people that share what we just heard them say is, is something that I think that God is saying. And here's what it is. The Lord has put this in my mouth. I'm going to be preaching it. I'm going to be aligning our house with it. And it's going to be the basis of our prayer meeting tonight. And here's what it is. Satan's weapon of choice for this moment, nationally, um, citywide, and on an individual level, and you better hear me, is distraction. That is the tool he is using. We are in and have been in a season of national distraction. Many of you saw the graphic 
of the God man and you see Jesus Christ in the middle of who has the majority of this nation's attention right now. That's how you see national distraction, right? On the, but and the Lord, in the last maybe 72 hours, the, the types of the, the amount of times I have heard the term distraction from God has been alarming. Satan's weapon, his tactic of choice right now is distraction. And if a church is distracted, a nation has no choice but to be distracted. Why? Because does God give the nation stuff to focus on directly or does he give the nation stuff to focus on by virtue of the church? The church provides the focus point of the nation. If the church does not have a focus point, then we can offer the nation a point of concentration. Yeah. Does this make sense to you? Yes, sir. Now, wherever a, a people or a nation is not concentrated on something, they don't have a point, then the byproduct is going to be chaos. Another byproduct of uh, distraction is fear. Um, and here's a few things that you need to know about distraction. I'll give you a scripture. We're going to pray. This is why I'm preaching Jesus. Is because to the Christian, he is our center point. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. To the Christian, Jesus Christ is the center point. And whenever there needs to be an upgrade in your centering, in your focus, it cannot begin with weight loss, hair, nails, or budgeting. It's got to start with Jesus. And that gives you the energy, that gives you the wisdom to endure in all the other disciplines you need. Does this make sense to you? So here's a couple of things to note about distractions is that number one, nobody knows they're distracted when they're in it. Distractions are not obvious because they are often veiled up in other things. So that's a part of what makes distractions so dangerous is because when they appear, when you've entered into them or when they've entered into you, they really do appear or feel or seem important. Now, as a faithful, skilled intercessor, one of the things you can never afford to do is be distracted. Because if the people that are responsible for conversations with God are distracted and they have consistent interferences in their prayer lives, then they have no real authority over what they're praying because authority is going to flow from clarity. So nobody, if you say to yourself, I don't feel distracted, that's not enough to know whether or not you're distracted or not. Because the thing that you're focusing on might be a distraction. Yeah. Hello? So all distractions are not obvious, number one. Number two, most distractions can be emotional. An effective way to distract a person is to toy in the realm of their psychology or their psychological self or their emotional self. The greatest attacks on your life will be mental. They will not be physical. They will not be financial. They will not be relational. Your greatest assaults will be mental assaults. That is where the most potent uh, attacks and battlefields will be. This is why if I were the devil and I'm not, and I saw an intercessor, I would play double dutch in their thinking. Because if I can play double dutch in their thinking or the position of their heart, I can affect what they sense from God, what they say to God, what they think is important, what they think is not important, because distraction is the name of the game. So when you have gone into a distraction, your emotions or your psychological self, which is your logic, the way you approach life, the way you approach the word, the way you approach devotion, all of those things are not under your control. That's how you know when you've entered into a point or a place of distraction is when they are controlling you and you are not controlling them. How many of you know you can determine your mood? You can determine your day? You can determine your discipline. That's it. Those are decisions. And it is at the point when you feel like those are things that are beyond your control that something in your life is serving as a distraction. Are you clear with that? So they're going to be emotional and they're going to be psychological. Number three, another byproduct of being distracted or a sign that you're distracted is you're going to be tired. Mm -hmm. You're going to notice that you're drained. 
It don't even matter if you have a job, if, you, if you're not in school, if you don't have kids, you will notice that you don't really have the energy for the right things. That is a sign and symptom of a distraction or a, that's been presented to you. So you're going to feel draining because one of the, one, one of the ways Satan uses distraction is to deplete of energy. Now, all of the intercessors in the room know this mystery, that prayer requires energy. Who knows that? Yes. If you don't know that prayer requires energy, you've not spent much time in prayer. Come on. Jesus prayed all night, several times in the word of God. One before he ordained the apostles, the other time when he was wrestling with the will of God over dying. And so everybody looks at the discipline of that, but you need to look at the energy of that. Was Jesus physically tired? Probably, but that means he had to draw energy from somewhere else. When you are physically exhausted, you have other reservoirs in your life that give you energy. Where are they? In your focus points. Because it's what you focus on that determines what you have the energy for. Having the right focus can fuel you for what you need to do. Does this make sense to you? So one of the signs that you're distracted is a loss of energy. Number four, distractions can also be circumstantial. Circumstantial. One of the most typical ways, and I don't mean common, I mean just easiest ways, that Satan loves to distract people is by circumstance. Circumstance can be distracted. And remember the Bible talked about the parable of the sower. The sower sows the word, immediately the birds come or it falls on uh, stony ground, or it falls on this ground, and it's choked out by that. What are all of those pointing to? Distraction. The cares and the concerns of life, however significant, can still be very, very distracting. I need to apply for this program. I need to make sure that the, the, the I don't know, I have air in my tire. I need to make sure that um, the kids, all of those. Now those are things you need to give attention to but don't be distracted by it. There is a middle point. I can give attention to the things that need my attention without being distracted by them. Does this make sense? Those are circumstantial distractions. Now, this is a tactic. What is a tactic? It is a weapon of Satan, a strategy of Satan. Satan has strategies. One of his strategies is distraction. It's distracting, it's psychological warfare. I can have your body here and your heart over in the Sahara Desert, your mind over in the doctor's office and, and all kind of stuff, which actually works against your body than here. So your body is here, your mind is there, your soul is there, your heart is there, you like Tamala man, you all churched out, you may as well stay at home because we can't get the strength out of what you're about to do unless you are willing to become undistracted. Just makes sense. So those are circumstantial distractions. Number five, they can be environmental. There are certain environments that can be distracting. Mm -hmm. Environments. Now you know environments can be physical. Um, so this can be literally who you gravitate to at work, who you spend the most of your social time with, what happens, even, even down to, and this now, and if this were of a, a discipline or focus intercessor's training, I was spend a lot of time here. I don't believe that an effective intercessor can live in a dirty house. I just, I just don't believe it. And here's why, it's distracting. I promise. When, when you are trying to, if, if you're on a prayer project, a prayer assignment, and you're going before the Lord, and there's socks everywhere, uh, you know, drums hanging off the, 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 the mirror, it, old eggshells all on the, on the counter, it becomes very distracting. Now, retract the wisdom in that. That means that all clutter affects concentration. Yes. That's in your physical life, that's in your mental life, that's in your, your, your inner man, your heart. This is why support systems are so important. I want you to hear me. Mm -hmm. One of the functions of a godly support system is to protect focus. Even when you allow yourself a room to vent and express, yeah. a godly support yeah. system yeah. will redirect what you have vented, redirect what you've expressed to protect the point of your focus. 
a demonic support system will highlight the distraction and inflame it. They'll magnify it. Hello? All right, that's important. That is very important for you to realize. Now, I want to highlight this with two things that we're going to pray about this. This is why I'm preaching Jesus. The Lord told me my church is distracted, and because my church is distracted, the nation is distracted, and I want you to travel and bring my people back to focus. Focus my people. Focus them. Bring them to focus. Because if there can be no concentration, then calamity is the only other power that will prevail. Hello? Things will happen. People will say things. Things will manifest. But the quicker you get them under control, the quicker you stop that stuff from hitting your focus. And focus is the most powerful thing. Let me prophesy to all of you. You must fight for your focus. That is the word of the Lord. You're not going to have to fight for anything in this season more than your focus. So a major point of your prayer in this season needs to be give me keen, say keen. keen. Give me keen discernment so that I will know what is a distraction. The quicker you can identify a distraction, the more productive you may be. All right? Now, all distractions are not quick. Some of them don't just manifest immediately. Some of them can be in your life for years. Some of them can be, uh, 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 some, some of you can even partake in another person's distraction. You can kind of have distractions imparted to you. Hello? I have always wondered, and, and the Lord, in, in studying this, because God, I've been dealing with this in my life, in every level of, of uh, uh, influence, every level of greatness, every level of promotion, there is a mandatory level of discipline that goes with it or else you lose the promotion. Promotion is not permanent. Can we say that? Promotion is not permanent. God can lift you up and you can jump off the rays by being distracted. He can take you to a new season and you can by act of your will go back to an old one because you're not focused. Hello? Now, Satan will use anything and anybody to do it. I've often wondered that when, when Jesus was teaching on prayer, when he was teaching about how re, the spirit of religion wanted them to pray and pray. Now, he basically told them this is the wrong way to pray because it's not effective. The way they pray is for more external things, more, it's, it's repetitive banter, it doesn't mean much, it's just for the sake of whatever. But then I love what Jesus says, but you, when you pray, the first thing that Jesus told them always used to mess with me because I didn't understand what he was doing. He said, but you, don't pray like them, all out of the market, all out in the street. Now, theologically, I'm thinking, well, God, is it a sin to pray in public? But then Paul said, men ought to pray all the time in all places. So he couldn't have been saying, don't pray everywhere. If somebody needs prayer in a grocery store, the spirit of prayer falls upon me in the streets, certainly I'll pray. You know, Smith Wigglesworth said, I'll never pray more than 15 minutes, but I'll never go 15 minutes without praying. So men are to always pray. Yes. So I have to pray, right? But what did Jesus say? You, when you pray, go into your closet. I never got what that meant or why that was. I'm like, this sounds really, really just special, you know. You go into. But here's what I learned. The closet is a place that symbolizes a place away from distraction. Oh, yes, it is. It's a secluded place. He basically was telling them, if you're not in a situation where you can focus, don't pray. Come on. That's good. When you pray, go into your closet. Remove yourself from... Distractions. Distractions. You don't have to look at the people buying and selling. You don't have to look at them with their fashion. You don't have to look at the cars passing by. Find a closet. Tell somebody, find a closet. Find a closet. You need, as an intercessor, you need to come to a point where you have a closet in your heart. Yeah. We're at work, at home, on the bus, at school, in an Uber. You can begin to find a place of focus so that you can pray. Does this make sense? See, you are only, as I have an OCD, my OCD is when I have things I need to do, I love post-its, post-its. Anybody love post-its? 
I write everything and I have to get it out of my mind because a secret of visionaries is they really have a little slowness to them. So I can only handle one thing at a time. So I have to get it all out of my mind and I have to line my posts up on my desk, right? That's how I do it. That's how I maintain it. That's how I get it done. However, if I were to not do that and not vent everything that I had to do, it would remain in my heart, remain in my mind. And what is that going to turn into? A to-do list? Or a burden, a burden, heaviness, weightiness. I just have so much to do. Anybody ever had one of the moments? So much going on, so much to get done. Listen to me, beloved. You have authority over that. You have authority over that. You run your life with the power of the Holy Ghost. Not a to-do list, not a circumstance, not a bad day. You have authority over that. So it doesn't matter how exhaustive uh, a to-do list is, you are only as focused as your prayer life. If your prayer life is distracted, so are you. And that is the bottom line. Make sense? Yes. Now, can I be a focused person without prayer? Absolutely not. See, one of the basis and one of the disciplines that prayer affords you is the ability to daily find the point of focus. Daily prayer enables you with the right to find a point of focus. And every day, you need to focus. Even if they're focused, and I have some days where it's like I'm not doing nothing today. That's my focus. When you, and, uh, I'm gonna use the word orientate your day that way by prayer, it sets it up for what you will allow and what you will permit in that day. So I'm hitting this so hard because this is why I am pointing and preaching Jesus. The church is distracted. We are culturally distracted. We are spiritually distracted. Everybody thinks that their message is the most important, that their strategy is the most important. Preachers are preaching a distracted gospel. Hello? The Lord, at the, at the prophetic conference, the Lord put a word on my mouth about prophets that need the media detox. Because you are the media of heaven. You need to get all of this gunk out of you. Which means that you probably need to vomit some of this stuff you spend on, on, on Instagram. And, and, and all of those things are not intrinsically evil. But when they become a distraction and they become idolatrous. And by idolatrous, I mean that they literally almost make demands of whole portions of your day. You have lost a place of focus. Hello? How do you agree with that? So as, and, and we all fall into it. Before I knew it, I was distracted. I was so mad about who about the Honda Nation. The Lord said, ah, ah, ah. You're distracted. You are distracted. So I want you to bring a point of focus back to my people. Okay, two scriptures. The first one, remember, um, prayer is your only resource for storms. Prayer is your only resource for storms. Here comes a deadly storm. It's coming to kill the disciples, coming to kill the boat, coming to end their lives. There was one who clearly heard the voice of the Lord. He was not the only one on the boat. The 11 were with him on the boat. One discerned the voice clearly. Now, he wasn't sure that it was Jesus calling him out. So he inquired, Jesus, if this is you, bid me come. Jesus bid him to come, that, that brought him out of one level of distraction. He gets out of the boat, he proceeds to walk around, and Jesus bids him to come. He turns away, looks at the wind, looks at the storm, looks at the rain, looks at who's back in the ship, and he looks away, and it cost him the chance that he had to govern over what drowns normally. Have you ever wondered what would have happened had Peter kept looking at Jesus? We would have had a whole different miracle written in the Gospels about how a man did what Jesus did because he was undistracted. The miracle of walking waters is focus. It's not even a geophysical miracle. It's the power you have as a believer when you come to a place of focus. When you have a place of focus, you can walk on what kills people. Now, what was the wisdom out of the failure of that moment? 
when Peter started to sing. What was Jesus' wisdom? All ye a little what? Let me ask you a question. Do you think that focus is a faith issue? Yes. Faith and focus are interrelated. Your faith is only as strong as your focus. Which means that if you are distracted, you cannot live in faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. That's not just faith in God, that is also the faith of God. Faith coming upon your life. Now, if Satan is trying to distract us as a nation, distract us as people, what do you feel like is revealing that God is trying to produce in our lives? Perhaps a greater measure of faith. Mm. Whatever God is trying to produce is in the embryonic stages right now because when something is in embryo form, it is cultivated by faith. Fear causes abortions. When God has released something in your life, it is choked out, strangled out, and murdered by fear. If you need faith, God is going to try, start trying to deal with what you're focusing on. Who's being blessed by that? Turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 in the Amplified Version. We're going to pray about distraction. We're going to pray about focus. We're going to pray for our church. They can focus. <clears throat> now, how many know transitions can be distracting? But you can transition well and not be distracted. Transition can be turbulent. Transition can be uneasy. One of the things that I know about transition is that it can put its finger on every fear you've got. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Is the devil afraid of your transition? Yes. Why? Is he scared of the journey? No. He don't want you at the destination. So transitions are always places of attack. When you are on your way somewhere, here comes sabotage. By the time you're there, you can't ruin it. So where the devil likes to attack you is on relationship journeys, mental journeys, healing journeys, deliverance journeys. All of those journeys become places of attack. But why did Israel spend 40 years on somewhere they could have got to in 11 days? Distraction. If you're, if you're focused, it'll take you time off the journey. Get you where you've got to go much quicker. Hebrews 12, 2, and we're going to pray. In the Amplified Version. How many of you, have been, how many of you feel like something has come to distract you? Yeah. yeah. I guess it's almost 100%. Everybody run. Right? My God. Yes. Hebrews 12 and 2, I'm telling you. Now, we are, we're dangerous if we concentrate and if we protect our focus. I'm telling you, something is going to be produced. See, because the saint can't stop what God is doing, he can stop our ability to see it. God has let something hit this house. Now, we're trying to figure out, why the miracles? Why the growth? What's happening? What's happening? So what saint can't stop him, only thing he can do is scramble your perception. What is it called? Distraction. Hebrews 12, 12, 2 in the Amplified Version. I love this. How do you focus a distracted people? Hebrews 12, 2. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. The first incentive for our belief yes. and the one who brings our faith to maturity. The objective of distraction is to keep your faith arrested. Your faith arrested. Where your faith is arrested, your fears talk loud. Mm -hmm. Life fears, relational fears, circumstantial fears, all of that is a sign of an arrested faith. Who, now, how did Jesus do this? This is what I love. This is how Jesus did this. This is what we're praying tonight. Who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross. So number one, what fueled his focus was a refusal to relinquish his joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you're going to focus, find something to laugh at every day. 
And I'm not talking about the mistakes of others. I'm not telling you to right. mock people. Right. I'm right. talking about a point of real joy. Where do I start? Gratitude. Joy is born from the things you're grateful about. It's not the house I want, but it's not the house I have. It's not the car I want, but it, it leaves its work and it gives me where it's got to go. I'm not making the money I want, but it's the least amount of money I'll make for the rest of my life. Hello, my friends are bums, but at least I have them. Glory to God. I have more of them than I do enemies. See, gratitude creates joy in your life. Who for the now? Jesus, the Bible said that he retrieved joy from looking at the cross. He should have been afraid. He should have been in panic. He should have been in anguish. But the Bible said looking at the cross gave him joy. Who for the joy that was set before him. So joy. And then joy produces endurance. He endured the cross. If you're going to be focused, you've got to have endurance. Tell somebody, don't quit. Don't quit. Open your mouth. Tell somebody, don't quit. Don't quit. Quitters quit because they were distracted. You don't quit what God told you to do. You don't quit the way he told you to live. You don't quit your deliverance process. You don't quit your forgiveness process. You don't quit your last series of instructions. You don't quit your daily prayer directives. You don't quit. I didn't quit, I stopped. You quit. When you quit, you have allowed distractions to take its full course. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul had a revelation of focus. He's always talking about pressing on, forging forward, enduring, you know, gaining uh, energy, uh, uh, looking up. I mean, these are all the revelations in Paul. And they beat him like he was on Cooley High. <laughs> Who for the joy of accomplishing the goal, set before him, endured the cross. How do you endure the cross? What does the next key say? Disregarding the shame. If you're going to pr protect your focus, you must be willing to overlook some things. Every battle is not yours to fight. Satan is trying to make the church, this nation, have a mental breakdown. By magnifying all the imperfections and all the stuff around them. Choose your battles wisely and choose them in faith. Address what the Holy Spirit says to address. Ignore the rest. Pastor called me there and said, what do you do when people leave your church? I said, I asked God, what are you going to do about your people? See, this, this is not... It's not my job to worry about what people are doing with their life. I didn't die for these people. I'm an overseer. Hello? God, these are your people. You got your work cut out. I externalize it so that I don't own it as a reflection of myself. Choose your battles. Some of you are distracted by choice because you don't want to choose your battle. Already, if you deal with a spirit of fear in your life, and America does, very powerfully, it happened at 9 11. Everything that goes wrong, we want to focus on. Everything, I mean, it's like the news got to tell us when one person has died. It's like death told us, 51 this weekend. I'm like, it was 50 last weekend. You have to just let us know about that one. Why? Because the devil gives updates. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's his way of keeping you distracted. Disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look at me. The basis of your focus. I almost felt myself just prophesied to America right now. I'm not going to shift on y'all. This is prayer. The basis, the center, the seat of your focus must be the sovereignty of God. Jesus was able to remain focused because God never got up off the throne. That's the bottom line. No matter what happens, who comes, who goes, what changes, what you lose, what you gain, what deadlines need to be met, what projects you didn't get accepted to, what positions didn't work out that you made, it does not unseat him. Yes. He remains seated. And if he remains seated, yeah. I always want to have my heart in a posture to receive from the seated one. Why? The devil has no seat. He was able to sit 
because God has a throne. Look at his authority, his word is forever true. And the completion of his work. You might be worrying about something whose answer was taken care of before the problem presented itself. There's no need to worry. There is, you don't have a thing in your life. America doesn't have a thing going on around it that there's not an answer for. Answers predate problems. Hello? Prophecies predate problems. Problems and their presentation are often delayed in when they respond. There is provision, whether it's wisdom, money, clarity for everything you face. But the devil is trying to distract you. And the more aggressive the assignment is, possibly the greater the reward the Lord is trying to get out of this season. You can be distracted by your own fears. You can be distracted by your own needs, your own standards, your own yeah. definitions. You can be distracted by all of that. But dangerous is the man that has found the place of focus. You find the place of focus, you are unstoppable. The human that is undefeated is the one who won't stop. The one who won't stop has a focus. Is this the word of the Lord to you? Have you does it bear witness with any of you? Can you see what the devil is doing in America? In America. I, I fell into it. We all fell into it because it's something that's hit the nation. Let's distract this. Hello? So we've got to deal with this. We're going to break its power, and we're going to relieve. No. And we're going to re <laughs> That was a distraction, you see? <laughs> and we're going to guard our focus. Amen? Amen. Right, stand up, we're going to pray. <laughs> All right, I just get the day out your head. Get the day out your head. Let's lift to him. That's him. Let's lift to him. Let's lift to him. We're intercessors. We're priests. We can look to him. We can look to him. We can look to him. Let's begin with gratitude. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Faithful one, thank you. Holy one, thank you. Righteous one, thank you. You don't have to stay in your seat. You can walk around and get comfortable if you want to. Thank you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You are our joy. You are our strength. You are our song, blessed Redeemer. We love you, we love you, we love you. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for faith. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the word. Thank you for victory. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your purpose. Thank you for your plan. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your counsel. Thank you for your integrity. Thank you for your authority. Thank you for your ways. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for redemption. Hallelujah. Thank you for the way of escape that you've given us. Thank you for being our rock and our shelter and our fortress. Thank you for being the cleft of the rock. Thank you for being the water. Thank you for being everything that we need. Thank you for being the rain. Thank you for being the plow. Thank you for being the hammer that smashes the rock in pieces. Thank you for being the ram in the bush. Thank you for being the one in the fiery furnace. Thank you for being David's harp. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being our high priest. Thank you for being the one that holds our days in your hand. Thank you for being the kind of God that does not forget. Thank you that you don't forget. Thank you, thank you that your ears hear the cry of the righteous. Thank you, thank you that the wicked will not go unpunished. And we don't have to retaliate and take revenge and pull our hearts 
out into a place of distraction. For you fight for us. Thank you that you are our defense. Come on, thank you. Thank you that you are our safe place. We can run to you, O oh God. Our habitation, our tabernacle, our refuge. We choose you tonight. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the God who fathers the fatherless and you care about us. Thank you that you clothe us with righteousness, even that our righteousness is like filthy rags before you. You have closed us in the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus, thank you that we are not filthy and we are not ridden with the cares of the world, but that you have washed us with the water of the word and you have made us pure before you. Thank you that you have borne our transgression and you have worn our iniquity and we don't have to be weary, we don't have to be afraid. You're calling out to us in this season, saying, come to me, all that are weary and that are heavy laden, and I will give rest. You are our rest. We are, you be rest in you. We find rest. Your word declares that therefore, therefore remaineth a rest for the people of God. So right now, even before we ask you for anything, we rest in you. Hey! We rest in you. Come on. We rest in you. Come on in the sense We rest in you. We rest in you. We come out of agreement with the anxieties of our heart. We come out of agreement with the distractions of our day. And we take rest in you. For you are our rest. You are our Sabbath. You are the one that we hide in. We give you glory. We look to you, we look to you, we look to you, we look to you, yes, we look to you, we look to you, you are our mind regulator, and as we thank you tonight, we believe that you are regulating our mind, you're bringing our mind together, you're bringing in the thoughts that exalt themselves against you captive, we bring them into captivity, every high thing, Operating in our mind that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We pull you down tonight. We arrest you. You are under arrest. Fear. We arrest you. Panic. We arrest you. Anxiety. We arrest you. Mistrust. We arrest you. Paranoia. We arrest you. Unforgiveness. We arrest you. You demon of regret, we arrest you in the name of Jesus. Fear of the future, we arrest you. We bind you with fetters, we bind you with chains, and you will not be loosed in our lives again. You will not be loosed in this church again. You are under arrest. You are under arrest. You are under arrest. We make prisoners of you. You are under we do are under arrest. We thank you that we are not slaves to our day. We are not slaves to the news we receive. We are not slaves to that that comes out of the bellies of hell, working to distract us, working to move us, working to push us, working to pull us. We are not distracted. We are a people that are focused. Lord, we repent tonight. Come on. Come on, intercessors, cry out. Lord, we repent tonight for being easily set aside and for being easily distracted. We repent tonight for hearing instructions and not heeding them, for receiving promptings and not following through with them, for receiving dreams and visions and warnings and not heeding them and holding fast to them. We repent, oh God, for the stubbornness of heart that found safety in terror and found safety calamity and found safety in fear. Oh God, and tonight by an act of our will, you say that if we would confess our sins, that you would be faithful to forgive us. Thank you that we are forgiven for being a distracted people, for being a confused people, for being a discombobulated people. Oh God, the enemy is sick disarray, the enemy is sick confusion. 
confusing on divers side. But you sent the helper. And a part of what the helper does is he helps us to not be distracted. So right now in the place of prayer, we call on the helper. We call on the helper. Holy Spirit, we need you. Come on, help me. Holy Spirit, you are our counselor. You are our confidant. You are our wisdom place. You are our Place of grace with the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
that your word declares that we will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow by day, nor the noisome pestilence. You will uphold us and not cause us to dash our foot against the stone, but you have given your angels to keep charge over us. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we decree a new release of a new species of angel that keep us from stumbling, a new release of angelic help to keep us from falling, a new release of angelic help. We decree this over America. We decree this over Chicago. We decree this over all nations worship assembly. That there is a new partnership with celestial beings that excel in strength, that help us not to stumble like mere men and stumble like distracted beings. That we don't live our lives in the flesh, but we live our lives after the spirit. Oh God, we create place for your wisdom in the name of Jesus. Let the fear of the Lord be upon us in Jesus name your word declares that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom let there be a new release of the fear of the Lord in this place a reverence for your way a reverence for your doings a reverence for your workings even in the midst of our hearts help us to honor and regard what you're doing in us help us to honor and regard what you're doing around us help us to honor and regard what you're doing for us help us to honor and regard what you called us to do and we will not fear for you are our hiding place you are our sufficiency you are our great potent and glory we will trust in you 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 now in the name of Jesus you spirit of terrorism you spirit of fear you spirit of confusion we take authority over you we come out of agreement with your temptations now. We rebuke you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we release the power of the sport of the Spirit, uh, which is the Word of God uh, against you now. Uh, we command your words to stop. Uh, we command your thoughts to stop. Uh, your attempts to stop. 
there's not another beyond me. And I'm getting ready to show my people a mystery in this hour, say of the Lord. I'm getting ready to reveal myself as the God of the weak. For you have come to me with your weakness. And you have lifted your weakness before me. And now, say the Lord, I shall bring to pass my word in strength. For though the devil had wanted to bring diverse disasters, I shall take the very disaster, and I shall be Lord over the water. For behold, if you will look to me, just beyond the disaster is your destiny. For I have made disaster a door for you, and I have caused you to be stronger than that that opposes you, say to the Lord. And what is this that I see? For behold, a great storm comes. Chicago shall see divers days of rain, and it shall rain and rain and rain and rain. And this will be your sign that I have come to you, say to the Lord, and I'm getting ready to cause abundance to come upon this city and to come upon this place. And as it rains in the natural, it's getting ready to rain in your life. For you have felt left in a drought and left without water. But I'm going to rain and I shall grow things in you that shall bring forth the harvest. So do not look to the storm and do not look to the waters. Though the breakers dash before you, I'm going to speak beyond the noise. And you will see me in my power and you will see me in my glory and you will see me in my strength, says the Spirit of the living God. Go ahead and praise the Lord. Jesus. We thank you that it is so. In Jesus' name. 